Discovery Expedition of St. Charles. What you will see over here is an encampment. We stay in the tents. Basically, we go out along the trail. All right? Now, we have different stations that we're going to be showing <laughs> primitive life skills that they use on their trip, on the expedition. He prepared food, he fixed things that were broken, he treated people when they were sick, he had full authority, just like all the other guys, to do things to help the uh, help the journey get through. So he was he was a full member of the uh, from her own native tribe, the Shoshone Indians. And then she was sold into marriage to Charbonneau and lived with the Mandan tribe. So she kind of affiliated with three different tribes. And they say, yes, Sacagawea is the, so the way we ought to pronounce it. Okay, one of the things that you can do very simply, if you have a minor toothache, get it closed, put it on the tooth that's giving you a problem, bite down on it, and leave it there. And over the course of the next few couple of hours, your saliva will mix with the clove. The oil clove will work as a numbing agent, and it will feel better. And if you have a minor toothache, then you can use this as far as trying to reduce the pain and itch uh, that people can work with. Now, if you have a real bad toothache, and we're going to have to do something a little more serious. All the way down the gum and, and hope we get it all. So if you don't get it all, I may have to do some digging down below where that will reach to get the rest of it and pull it out. Enjoy the next station. And what grade? Eighth grade. So you guys probably have studied. We're going to take a walk around here. Now, the Army did not issue any. Overcoats for winter time, but they did issue blankets to the soldiers. So what the soldiers would do was take their blanket and cut it into a capote. This is nothing more than a than a blanket which you use it as a blanket. These blankets are also used as trade out in the frontier. And when you go to a trade store, they would have a blanket on a shelf, and they may have one row row of three stripes. Now the three stripes indicated that it took three beaver pelts to buy this blanket. If it had four stripes, it would take four beaver pelts. And the reason for the difference is, the more expensive blanket had a tighter weave and it used more wool in it, so it was a more expensive blanket. We could have two stripes. It would take on air condition. We did have what we call today a raincoat. This is called an oil skin. They didn't call it raincoats at the time. It's a cloth coat similar to this, and it's boiled in linseed oil. When you boil it in linseed oil, the oil penetrates the fabric, impregnates it, and makes it waterproof. We did have what we call oil skin. What with the uh, what the Indians wore. First of all, the shoes would go first. So we ended up making moccasins. The moccasins are made from uh, uh, elk skin, which is more has more durability than deer skin. These are two different types of moccasins. This is what they call a pucker toe. It's made by a certain tribe. Sometimes tribes have a little idea of how clothing should be made. It's just another pair of regular markers. Now, in order to protect the cloth clothing, men started to wear leggings. Put this over your cloth coat, pull it up, 
you have a tie, you put it around your belt, and that would protect the car from the water. They got into an argument. One time. So, during that time, Andy Jackson's cute left wife was married to another man. Knowing how to make clothing and things like that, start the fires. We had to go not on the boat so much as we were on shore. And we would be dressed like this because we were blending into the woods and we need to be able to stalk uh, different kinds of animals that we could bring back to camp for this, this camp kit to process for all of the troops. What kind of animals might I have been looking for? Bear. Large bear. Deer. The buffalo was there. I may be living for a couple of days away from the boat. These guys are being fed while I'm gone. If I see some rabbits or squirrels, I may shoot a couple of those for myself to eat or the other hunter that's with me. Give him a parched corn and a little bit of jerky we might have uh, prepared over the fire. Because he's not going to come back every day. And we didn't stop camp and set up a lunch time. So we would kind of make that big meal in the morning and get all... St. Charles, Missouri. And this is our keelboat. We're very, very proud of this boat. Uh, thankfully, Lewis and Clark left us journals by which they described a lot of things. And one of the things they described is the type of boats that they used during the, the expedition. And one of them was this keel boat. This was the biggest boat they had. In their journals, they said she was 55 feet in length and she was 8 feet from gunnel to gunnel. So 8 feet wide, 55 feet long. They also said that this boat weighed 7 tons empty. Now, it's made out of western red cedar and white oak. And uh, the beauty of that is the western red cedar can be bent very easily, and the white oak is very sturdy. So they, used both, they selected both of those. This boat was made in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, and was used on the entire trip all the way to Fort Mandan in the Dakotas, almost to the Canadian line, correct across the nation. So that gun could be used as a cannon, but mainly it was used as a signal gun. Uh, the cabin back there you see is uh, was actually Lewis and Clark's home away from home. That's where they slept. That's where they journaled in the evenings. They kept their journals. That's where Captain Clark worked on his maps. And that's also where Meriwether Lewis would describe the plants and animals that he collected during the day. Because uh, one of his duties was to collect plants and animals that were unknown to science. And they found this little animal in one of Nebraska. They found it in the prairie and it made this barking sound, so they named it Prairie Dog. They spent half a day collecting this animal and then they made a cage. They kept it all winter at Fort Mandan. They put powder in this, gunpowder, and then they put beeswax around the uh, cork uh, to, keep, was to keep it uh, the moisture from getting out. Uh, keep it dry. Remember now, about 206 years ago, the land west of the uh, the river out here was purchased from France. It's called the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, Lewis and Clark's job was to go out and map and to kind of see what they had just bought for $15 million, see what, what kind of a deal they got. They knew that it was a vast territory, but they knew very little about it at that. with the Indians. When they reached Fort Mandan, it was in the winter time. And they had, they started their food supplies started dwindling and the weather was so bad the hunters couldn't get out to hunt to cook meat. So they had an old stove. They cut the stove apart and they took the made took the pieces and made these and traded them to the Indians for corn. And that's how they survived the, the winter that year.